Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you some techniques on how to create some rings for 3D printing. It's not going to be a specific ring, but rather various approaches that you can use and combine to create your own ring. Well, what you're going to need is a version of Blender, which I'm using, and also you're going to need some ring sizes, like any image of, of Google will do. You're going to need the inner perimeter, and you're going to need, a, as, unless you have your own 3D printer, a 3D printing service. What I'm using is Shapeways and in the make and materials and for example steel specifications you're going to see some design guidelines and the important part for rings would be the minimal wall thickness as well as the minimal wire thickness. Well let's get started. Let's go to our 3D scene Oh yeah, I'm going to show some methods on how to create eight different rings, as well as some basics. And first of all, I'm going to be using the blender units as millimeters. So basically the blender units is what you can see in the dimensions. In this case it has two blender units in each, yeah, in each axis. And yeah, if we export this cube and make sure that selected only is uh, checked in case you have several models in the file, otherwise it just throws them all in there. And yeah, by the way, the scale, you can also apply the various math operations, so 1 plus 1 divided by 3, for example, gonna have 4 thirds, or just 2 thirds if you want it smaller, or let's, in this case we'll leave it as 1. So. Let's upload the cube. And millimeters should be checked by default, but you're free to use inches and meters, of course. And once it's done, done uploading, it's going to make some automatic tests to check if the wall thickness and other criteria are met. And it's going to display some basic information. Also, one of them is going to be the size. So yeah, here we go. Two millimeters in all the axes. And yet there is of course some issues because 2 millimeters is too small to print. So if you're new to Blender I'm going to go over some basics. If you're already familiar with the basic operation just click on the time that's displayed on the screen. So yeah, what you might wonder if you open up Blender for the first time is that the leftmost button doesn't do anything except moving this thing around. It's called a 3D cursor and it has some various uses. So for example, it's the origin point where the new objects are going to be created. So if you want a specific location, just click somewhere where you want it and create a new object and it's going to appear in that place. You can also select it here. If you don't have this displayed, you can toggle it by pressing N. This thing on the right side of the panel, you can toggle with T. So yeah, you can manually set the 3D cursor where you want it, or you can snap it to a certain objects. For example, if you want something to appear in this corner, you press Shift S, select the cursor to select it, and then the new object is going to be in that corner. Another use is to switch the coordinate system to the cursor. This is useful if you want to rotate an object around another object or an, uh, around a specific point. So for example, if you want to rotate this cube around the other cube, you snap it to this cube, then you press period, and the coordinates are going to be around this pivot point. If you're not comfortable selecting the object with the right mouse button, you can change it in the preferences. So go to File, User Preferences, and then you can go to Input and change the select with left or right mouse button. Don't forget to save once you're done. So now we want to move the object. You can use the arrows or you can press the hotkey G to move it. And if you want to move it just along a, a specific axis, then you're gonna press X for the X axis and restrict it just to that one or Y for the other one and Z for the last. Now if you want to move it around along a plane, for example the XY plane, you can exclude an axis by pressing Shift and 
the z-axis for example, and it's going to be restricted to that plane. The same applies for the rotations by pressing R, restricting it to one axis for example, and the same goes for scaling. Also if you double tap R, you can move it in a dolly way. Also if you press tap, you can edit the actual object and move the vertices and for example alter the geometry and in this case all the same controls apply and also if you just want to slide one loop or a certain vertex along the, the edge you can double tap G and it's going to be restricted to the edge but you can also just press G in a certain axis and it's going to move along it what you might find handy, for example, is to change the coordinates to local coordinates. For example, if you rotate the object by 45 degrees, then you can switch to local, which it already is. So the global always remains the same, but the local one are going to be rotated along with the object. So if you want to move it at a certain angle, you can use the local coordinate system. For example, if you move, you still have the y-axis and the global one, but if you double tap the y button, it's going to be the local coordinates. So the local coordinates are also very useful for certain modifiers, but more on that later. Another way to manipulate that location, rotation, or scale is using the transform panel. You can toggle an off or on with N if you don't have it displayed. And then you can use these values by either click and holding and dragging to change the value by moving your mouse left and right, or you can click on it and type the value that you want. Also, if you want to move it in very small increments, you can hold down shift to make it a lot slower. What you can also do is use basic math. For example, you can just add 1.5, or you can divide it by 2, or any other operation. Of course, it's not enough to just move the object around. You also want to change the actual shape of the object. So, for doing that, you click Tab to go into the Edit mode. And in this one, you can manipulate the vertices. That's each point, which are connected with the edges. And the edges form a face. So you can apply all the same principles that you did to moving the object, for example, G is to move it around, S is for scaling, won't do much if you just have one vertice, but if you select several, then you can scale the edge, for example, and you again can use the 3D cursor, for example, if you move the coordinate system to the 3D cursor, then it's going to be the origin point for which you're going to scale from. Same goes for rotation. So if you want to make the geometry more detailed, you can of course press Alt and R to create a loop cut. You can also delete, of course, certain vertices, but first let's cover how you can select them. You're going to select the vert in vertex mode. You can select the vertices, for example, by pressing the right mouse button. If you hold on Shift, you can select several if you hold on Alt and right-click on the edge, you can select the whole loop cut. And if you hold down Shift, you can also deselect. Or if you hold down Shift and Alt, you can toggle between selecting and deselecting the whole cut, loop cut. You can also switch to edges, to selecting the edges. And the same goes for the faces. Now, since you can delete the vertices, this is also a point where you might to undo something. For that you just press Alt-Z like in any other software. But you can also access the history by pressing Ctrl, Alt and Z. And this will going to show the history and then you can go to any point of editing the object. As long as you don't actually change anything, you can go back to the first. But if you go back, and change something, then that's going to be the new history. So watch out if you 
want I'm unsure if you actually going want to undo everything you've done to some, to some certain point. So if an object has some symmetry or repeating patterns, you can be lazy and let the computer do some of the work. For example, what you're going to need is some modifiers. In this case, let's just open the modifier panel. In the properties panel, it's the wrench symbol. If you don't have a properties panel, you can click on any of the little triangles that you see in the corner. By holding them with the left mouse button, you can drag it around and change it to any menu that you want. In this case, properties. By holding on with the right mouse button on the place in between, you can join them back together. So let's go over what the mirror modifier does. Obviously it mirrors. Nothing happened because the x-axis x -axis is actually whole. This can be very problematic in 3D printing. And yeah, if I apply it, you'll see that it now actually has two walls. And they overlap exactly. And that's a problem because it won't know which of the walls needs to be drawn. So yeah, if I go back. This, having just the modifier, won't change the mesh. It just changes the object as it appears on the screen. But it still uses the same geometry without changing it. So yeah, let's go over the symbols. This one toggles an on or off for rendering. That does not matter for 3D printing. This one shows it... well, let's actually select Y so you can see a change. Yeah, disabling this one will disable it in the viewport and this one will enable and disable it in the uh, in the edit mode so now you see just the mesh and this one shows the mirrored part as well and if you want to see the vertices then you can select the last symbol since it's a cube it has more than one symmetry that we can exploit so for example if we delete even more parts and leave just one corner of it then we can also enable the other axis and have the whole cube and what this does is actually allows us to modify just a small portion while still changing the whole object now there are some more panels that are useful as I mentioned already the modifier uses the local uh, coordinates so if you move it around the modifiers on the modifier goes along. But for example, if you want to have a certain ornament on various sizes, you can actually, for example, let's snap the 3D cursor to the center, and we can add an empty. The empty doesn't have the actual mesh, it just has the properties of location, rotation, and size. So for this, you can use the um, mirror modifier to alter to use this one as the mirror axis or mirror plane. You can actually combine it. For example, as you can see, you can either connect them, and as you see, they don't snap, but you can change this with clipping, and then they won't go past the mirror um, plane. But you can also combine, for example, if you copy it or just add another one through the menu and then delete the actual mirror object. It uses the local system for the first one and then it uses the empty object for the second axis. And you can go even further. So as I mentioned, the local coordinates can play a part. So let me delete all of this and add a new fresh cube. So if you, for example, want to make some sort of star and you rotate it by 45 degrees and another way of making loop cuts or basically other cuts, you can either, for example, move it to the other edge and here as well and delete the other ones and in order to not have any problems with the object being not manifold, basically having several overlapping vertices, you can select everything 
and remove the doubles. And now it has just one vertex. Now, if you apply the modifier, it's going to use the local system. But it's not exactly how we want it to be. But for this case, we can use again another object, for example, the plane axis. And then we can use the global axis through the actual object. And this allows us to have, yeah, basically more freedom in the way we create the object. Another useful modifier is the bevel modifier. What it does is chamfers the edges and right now it uses no restriction or limit method but you can for example set it to angle or if you want to apply it to a certain part you can edit a vertex group. For example if you want it to be on just this edge you can create a new vertex group, name it bevel make sure the weight is 1, it should be by default, and assign the selected vertices. And now if you select the vertex group and the bevel which you just created, then, well, it's going to bevel just this one. And the angle you can also set to different angle limits. For example, if you want any angle, well, you can either disable it or set it lower, or if you want just the top edges, you can set it to something close to 70 or 80. And you can, of course, increase the size. Have the clamp overlap. It makes sure that if you increase the width to a certain point that goes beyond the actual size of the object, it's still going, for example, as you can see, I'm increasing it and it's not going any further. But if I disable it, it creates some issues. But yeah, let's make it something more plausible, like this. And you can also use it to make certain rounded parts by increasing the segments. And you can as well create, uh, alter the shape of this curve by editing the profile from 15 to one or as well by just typing it. Another way to smooth the object is with a subdivision surface modifier. So let's set this one in and with this one we need to take care that the object is not going to become too small because what the modifier does is it takes each face, subdivides it by four and smooths it. So disabling it you can see that the size actually decreases naturally because it becomes smoother with each subdivision. So it might need to be adapted so it won't fall below the requirements of the material. Now, if the smoothness is not required, for example, if we just need more geometry for sculpting or for some sort of displacement, we can set it to simple. But otherwise, let's go with the smooth. And there is also no way to actually limit this to a certain section of the model. So for example, if we want to maintain a smooth, yeah, long part, there are basically two ways, by increasing the subdivisions, or the loop cuts, or by adding a mean green, which you can mean crease, which you can use in the edge data, and by increasing it, it's going to make, make a flat surface or a more sharper edge. Well, yeah, the other modifier will cover as we actually make some rings. So let's start with a very basic ring. And what could be more basic than just adding a simple circle? And over here, in the panel, if you don't have it, press T to toggle it, or you can press F6, and here you can add or change the vertices from making it basically a triangle or very smooth. 
So let's just make it 20 for now. And just pick some sort of ring size. So a typical one, let's point, pick 7.7 .7 for the diameter. And we can just enter it in the dimensions. Let's type 17.7. .7. And we can just copy it. For example, we just need to hover above the number, print Ctrl C, hover it about the other number, and press Ctrl V. Now let's go into edit mode, and by pressing E, we can extract it. By the way, you can also use the middle mouse button to toggle on and off the certain axis, or you can just press Z and type, let's make it three millimeters high. And now it almost looks like a ring. Well, we can now either select all the faces, press E, scale it and limit the Z axis from being scaled, increase it until it looks right. Or we can just use another modifier and use the solidify modifier. Now let's check again and the unsupported walls, or in this case both the supported walls and unsupported walls for object less than 76 millimeters need to be at least one millimeter thick. So let's enter one and it's going to be huge because we still use the dimension and the scale of the object, the local scale. So we can apply the scale by pressing Ctrl A and scale. Now the scale changes to 1 and we have the right thickness but it's on the wrong side. So we can either choose the offset to be on 1 or we can select the object, go to the uh, shading and recalculate the normals. You can view the normals by activating them. If I'm going to find the panel here, you can just make the size bigger. And yeah, what this blue line indicates is which face the software sees at the outer wall. So let's flip those. So, well, now we have a ring, but it's very jagged and low resolution. So one way to tackle this is by adding, for example, a subdivision surface modifier. But now, if you remove the solidify modifier, you can see it's no longer 70.7 .7 that it should have had. And it's going to be even smaller if we increase it. So we would have to change dimensions or use another method. So let's stick with this one, for example. Uh, the whole ring is, in this case, smooth. For example, if we want the outer wall not to be that much rounded up, we can add some new faces, uh, sorry, some loop cuts. Or we can combine it with a bevel by putting it in front and limiting the angle. We can also alter it by changing the width. Or if we actually put the subdivision surface modifier in front of the solidify modifier, it's not going to affect the actual solidifying since they are executed in order. And now we can just add a bevel and round the edges as we want them to. And of course to limit the angle. But yeah, it's not very nice that the actual size decreases. So if you're going to use the subdivision surface modifier, make sure that you adjust the inner diameter to actually fit the size you're making. So a nicer method is to actually use a screw modifier. So let's delete this one, just add a simple plane. And in order to not get any artifacts or weird shapes later, let's delete the face. Uh, click delete and select the face. Oops. What I meant was to select only the face. We still want the edges and the vertices to remain. Now let's rotate them along the y-axis. 
and move them outwards and select the screw modifier. Now it's already looking like a ring. Now it might look weird, for example, if another axis is selected or you're using a different axis. If it looks something like this, just make sure that you select the right one. Now, in order to set the size, we can just type it here. It was 17.7 .7 divided by 2 since it's the radius now. And with this one, we can either go to the snapping tool and select vertex, snap it to the first, press G, Y, and 1 to move it by one blender unit along the Y axis, and we have the ring. Another method is, of course, to just use math and add 1 here, or the right size. By the way, 1 is just the minimum, so it's best to have a bit more than just one. Especially if you want to make several sizes, if you're not just making a ring for yourself, you might want to account for different sizes. So either you want us to make each size separately, or if you're just going to scale, you can either select use, for example, three different sizes and scale upwards, or use a generic size and scale up and downwards, but if you're going to scale downwards, make sure that no edge or wire is going to be below the material requirements. So using the screw modifier, don't forget to check the calculate order. And in this case, since it looks dark, it means that the normals are flipped. So let's flip them to make it right again. And the nice thing about the screw modifier, we can now increase the number of steps. And as you can see, the size will not be altered, so it's going to vary, of course, by little by little, but the inner diameter is still the right one. So, another neat part, if you're going to make some, for example, rings that are not symmetrical, you can actually just use it for making just a portion of the ring. So, of course, you can stack different modifiers over it, or instead of actually modeling the size, use the solidify modifier again. But well, this is of course a rather boring ring. So yeah, we can just change it up a little. Hey, by the way, if you press Alt, uh, Ctrl and R, and then scroll upwards with the mouse wheel, you can increase the number of cuts you're going to make. Let's also smooth it. And let's put this in front. So as you can see, it altered the normals again. We can counter it by disabling the flip. You might have to adjust it accordingly. But yeah, by putting the subdivision modifier in front, we just are affecting this part and not the screw itself. So for example, to save some material, we can just move this up a little bit in the front. By the way, different methods of select selecting the vertices is by pressing B. Then you have a box select mode. By pressing B and using the middle mouse button, you can deselect. Or by toggling A, you can select everything or deselect everything. And by pressing C, you can select with this round thing. And by pressing the middle mouse button, you deselect. And by pressing the right mouse button, you confirm the selection. You can also increase the circle with the mouse wheel. So yeah, you can also add some different parts. Make any sort of shape you find interesting. What you need to avoid is to have some sharp parts. So basically something like this will not be printed well because, yeah, it creates a very thin wall and it's also a far to find detail in order to print. So what you also need to look out for is the minimum boss and engraved detail. 
it depends on each material so yeah you can also select for example if you're going to print silver it's going to be a much higher resolution well now if you don't want the ring to be that uniform but still have a repeating pattern we can still use another modifier so let's for example create a cube let's move it outwards so to make it easier let's mark this face snap the cursor and then let's move the origin it's this yellow point or orange point and it defines the position of the cube so let's snap it to the 3d cursor and now it's at the very outer wall now we can move it to 70.7 divided by 2 and now in order to use the next modifier we need the origin to be in the same spot as with as the empty so let's snap the cursor by pressing shift and s cursor to center and then set the origin to 3d cursor again now let's create plane axis now we can use an array modifier so what this does for this let's delete the faces and merge them it uses now a relative offset basically it uses the dimension of the object as one so basically one is hundred percent of the size you can also of course use the constant offset and increase the count now this doesn't look much like a ring so let's disable this one and use the object now we don't see much happening but if you start to rotate it then it's going somewhere so we need this loop to close basically and in order to do that it needs to have the length of the ring so since the ring is 70.7 millimeters in the middle let's disable it so it's the actual object now let's increase the dimension in the x-axis to 17.7 times pi which is the perimeter now let's apply the scale or basically let's divide it let's say by 100 apply the scale again now we activate this one and then we rotate it by 3.6 and use 100 parts then we get some sort of ring we get some weird gaps that we don't want let's also not forget to merge the final since we want it to be one object now we can either go into edit mode and then we just scale along the x-axis until they melt you'll see them snapping well you can actually set the distance to a higher level so they will merge earlier so now we have a nice object but it's not very much to work with so let's disable it again scale it let's say by five oops by five along the x-axis and use just 20 parts and use 360 divided by 20 rotations 
course we need some bigger rotations. And now we have the same problem set with the first string, but we can still use the subdivision modifier. And again, we need to look out for the dimensions so they won't be too narrow. But what we now can do is, for example, add some different geometry. Now, for example, if we delete faces and connect those, select both of those holes, press W and loop tools. And if you don't have this menu, just go to the preferences, add-ons, type loop, and if it's not checked, then check this box and save the settings. And then you'll have loop tools, and then you can just bridge this. For example, let's add some more loop cuts and scale along the y-axis. Now we have a ring like this, for example. We can also use this to make some sort of ornament along other rings. So we just delete this, add, for example, a circle. And we don't need the subdivision in this case. And combine it with the other ring we get some sort of pattern. And you can use it to create any pattern. And of course, if we change one object, all the other will be changed alongside. Now, for depending on the 3D printing service you're using, basically using a ring like this, we'll ju you just need to export both parts. So let's just try it. We select both, press export, STL, and make sure that selected only is checked. Now let's name it ring one. Now here it is. Let's put it in an archive and upload it to Shapeways. The way you do this is by just clicking upload, selecting the file, and clicking Upload. Now Shapeways is going to merge both objects oh, basically, yeah, into one. Uh, so it's enough as long as both objects are manifold, it means they have no holes and the normals aren't twisted, and as long as they overlap each other. And now I know I said that overlapping is bad, but it's only bad if it's basically overlaps the same. So if I just duplicate by pressing Shift D and then leave it as it is, they're going to overlap the same faces at the exactly same places, basically. And that can create issue because the software won't know which of the faces to put in front of the other. So that might create holes. So let's, for example, just use the Boolean, unify, select the other cube, actually worked, but it sometimes creates issues. But yeah, you can also create the same method. So let's just add a boolean, unify, and cube, and then it adds the object. But usually it's all right to just have them overlapped and it decreases the processing time if you don't have the boolean operation because if as it goes more complex it will take a lot of time to make any changes. By the way, let's not forget to save regularly. So the first time you need to save as username and the next times you can just use a control s as a shortcut. Now let's go back to the previous ring. The problem it has is that it has some straight spots. Well, we can of course correct this manually by moving them forward. Or so basically, actually, we need to move these 
backwards and they creating a few issues because we are using the global coordinate instead of the actual angle. We can actually use the angle by creating our own coordinate system. If we create three points and then hold down Control, Alt and Space, we can create a coordinate system along this line. So if we move it like this and then do the same for the other one. Close the loop. Now it looks more rounded, but it's still a not very nice approach. So there is another method, method that we can use. Let's create a new little plane. Rotate it. Oh, and change back the, the local local coordinate system and let's move it again to the ring size that we chose and we're still going to use the ray modifier but this time we're actually going to keep oops, the relative offsets what we're going to use is a curve, so let's select curve and a circle and let's scale this as well along to the ring size that we want, 17.7 and copy the size. So it's actually, well, let's apply a solidify so we can see it from above and it looks like the previous ring is actually done, so let's take a look and refresh the site. I'm going to cut it out. So yeah, that's the ring that we uploaded. It has passed the material test, so yeah, it basically can be printed in any plastic, any steel, and any precious metal. So if there are any issues, you can always go to the 3D tools and check out the issue. Usually it's the wall thickness that you can load and maximize. And then look at what part of your model is displayed to have weak walls. And then you can go back and fix those. So let's add again 1.2. So now we can see it from above. Let's move it actually so that the origin is here. So by x1, let's move the origin to this point. And let's do the same for the curve. And now we can use the curve modifier. Let's move it in front of the solidify modifier and select the curve. Let's of course merge it. And an issue you might encounter, oh, let's make the normals a bit smaller. Let's reduce the radius and then let's go to the curve properties and disable the radius to deform the mesh. So we can also increase the loop cuts so that it's smooth but it's still not very smooth and that's because the curve itself has a rather low resolution so let's bump it up to 64 and now it's starting to look nice. So let's disable the curve again once more. And let's make it 20 again. And let's use the perimeter again by 17.7 .7 times pi. And applying the size, we get a nice closed loop. 
not exactly closed, but we can cheat a little bit by either adding a one more um, count or by increasing the scale a little bit. Um, wrong direction, the x scale. Again, having it overlap like this, it's of course not a very clean solution, but a uh, service like Shapeways has no problem in actually adding, merging that. But what you actually want to do is once you're finished editing, you can apply all modifiers, either by clicking apply mo manually, or you can uh, click Alt and C and create the mesh. And in this case, you just merge by pressing W merge at center, merge at center. And yeah, and of course, delete the face because that's going to create some issues. And of course, also remove the doubles. Oops. Yeah. But let's go back to the version with the modifiers. So now what we can do now is actually create any sort of mesh and it's still going to follow the curve nicely. We can also add a subsurface modifier in front of the curve or even in front of the actual array. But putting it in front of the array can create again some small artifacts. But then again you can use other loop cuts or other methods to well avoid that. For example scaling those up. Well, let's select those as well. This can be avoided by just moving the array modifier in front of the subdivision modifier. You're still going to have this little edge, but yeah. Just once it's done editing, we can just use it or just increase the dimensions a little bit at the scale. So yeah, we can add any sort of changes to the mesh. Let's display the curve in real time. So yeah, we can add any modification. Can again move the curve a little further. Add a little bevel. And so on. Now the, the reason for setting the origin at this specific point is that if the ring size changes, you could just, for example, if you don't want to scale the ring, you can scale the curve. And once it's scaled, you can just add a few more counts in the array and have a bigger ring. You can also tweak the length by using the scale to adjust the end. So that's a nice way to create a different variety of sizes for the rings. So here it is, it was loading a lo long time, so I forgot to actually pull it up again. But yeah, that's what the heat map looks like. Usually I don't like the heat map that much, but since there are no thin walls in this case, it's no way to disable, but usually you can disable it. And yeah, also look at what parts of them. In this case, everything's green, so it should print just fine. Now let's go ahead and see what else we can do with the curve modifier. Now let's just duplicate again by pressing Shift D, moving it to another layer. And it's still going to use the curve. But yeah, let's delete everything, create for example one other plane, so another ring design that saves a lot of material is using a wireframe. So there are several methods achieving this, 
let's bump up the count a little bit. Well, one method is very straightforward, just using the wireframe modifier. Looks a bit weird, so we don't actually need the solidify modifier for this, and certainly don't need the subsurf modifier, and also the bevel. So let's go back. It's still very thin. So let's tweak it a bit, make the thickness 1. And we need to have the creased edges. Uh, sorry, the boundary. So that it's not actually open. And we're going to need some either the bevel. So we can smooth out the edges a little bit. Or we can also use the, solid of, uh, the subdivision surface modifier. Now, the result is not very nice because there are some spikes that are created by the modifier itself. So another way is, of course, make it manually. So let's delete this, for example, move it move those further apart and you can of course select the whole line of vertices and use this 0.5 for example to make sure that you actually meet the requirements for the wall thickness Oops. minus 0.5 let's delete this one and yeah by creating a solidify modifier and again, we can either use the bevel to round it up a bit. Or the subsurface modifier. With various results. And there is yet another way. So, let's delete all of this and then we can use the skin modifier and again we can either use the bevel or the subdivision modifier or a combination of both Let's delete this one. But in the skin modifier you won't find any means to control the thickness. This is done somewhere else and it's done here. You can press either Ctrl and A to increase the size or you can type it directly. In this case, since it's the radius, it's gonna be 0.5 and let's copy this. And now the bevel is causing some issues. Let's just delete it. And, and it looks like the curve is also flipping them a little bit. So let's just move the skin modifier in front of the curve. It's looking good except for the end here. Because yeah, that's a little overlap and a twist. But yeah, that's going to be fixed manually once it's done, so... Best way would be to apply the array modifier. And this circle is where the root is going to be, so at the end you just want to have one root, and it's looking a lot better already. And you can also, of course, apply the skin modifier or the curve modifier in this case. Delete one set of those, merge them together. And create one single root. Uh, 
the, uh, the obvious problem with those is they can sometimes have some branches so you might want to smooth the branches but take care not to go below the requirements so since it's smooth I usually find that 1.57 or 6 is the size that's going to be okay for not removing or basically not getting too thin with the subdivision modifier applied so let's go back a little bit seems like those we don't actually need those so we dissolve the vertices and some of the issues disappear Now, in order to avoid some of the issues, we can just separate those parts. So let's, for example, delete this completely and this as well. Let's add another root here. Select those, copy them. And let's press P to make it actually a separate object. And here it is. So since we are be using relative, it's now inside itself basically since the actual object is just this line and this line has no thickness so basically it's not displacing it anyway so let's see this constant instead and bump it up and let's make it a little higher so yeah you can also add any sort of variation for example, make it curved, or swiggly, or any way you want. Once again, depending on the 3D printing so uh, software, it might be necessary to actually add them with the boolean operation, but usually, for example, if you're using shapeways, you can just export this after fixing, of course, this section here and yeah the software is going to merge them themselves so let's copy this object again just so that I don't need to apply the modifiers but of course you can also select two objects and the one you selected last is going to be the one you're copying from so if you press ctrl L and then link the modifiers then the new object is going to have the modifiers of the one you copied from. But of course, if you're using the curve modifier, we're not limited to using the arrays. So we actually can just use one object. And let's make it the length of the ring. And nothing much is going to happen because we need to add some root caps. Oh yeah, that's what happens if you, we don't apply the size. So let's apply it. And it looks better already. So, basically, we are not limited to using an array. We can make a completely unique object. For example, moving it around anyway without any regular pattern let's make it a bit wider the important part of course is that these two are the same so yeah I think I didn't change them yet so Remove the bevel. So yeah, here's for example one squiggly ring. And we are of course not limited to using just one curve. So let's pull up this one again copy it into another plane and 
And let's select or create a circle this time. And move it in by one in edit mode. And rotate it along the y axis. Now let's create a new with the cursor and a new curve. And let's create just a busier curve this time. And let's make it straight. So rotate it by 45 degrees. Move it by 1 into X, sorry. And let's make it the length of the ring. So 17.7 pi. Now, let's make an array from this one. Let's flip the normals and use the curve. Now, let's change the shape a little bit. So let me delete this for a little bit. Now let's select, for example, every fourth vertice. So, to, oops. But so, what I want to make is a little bit of a gradient or a smooth uh, scaling. So in order to do that, let's hit O and select a root and make the influence smaller. Something like this. So extruding this again, we'll get a shape like this. Flipping the normals, applying the curve. So let's copy the curve modifier and use the other curve. Nothing happened yet, but what we can do is there is another part of the curve, not just the shape, but it can also twist. So if we use the second one and tilt it, let's just type 360, it's going to twist like some sort of macaroni. Let's make a complete circle. And let's increase the width and the length a little bit. And yeah, you can again hold down shift to make a little bit smoother. All right, so it's not very noticeable, but yeah, we can, for example, multiply it by two or even by four to create a twist like this. And if you just add a little more loop cuts, it's going to have a smoother transition. So yeah, that's another way. It's of course best to melt or to merge those ends once you're done tweaking. And of course some objects can be combined to create one ring. For example, taking again this little curve, let's create, I don't know, a circle. Let's rotate it. Use the curve modifier. Scale it. Now what I'm going to do so that it actually curves nicely around the curve is I'm going to extrude those parts, then let's scale them along Z and scale them by zero to make them flat. Let's snap them by holding con uh, control to those lower, so let's just enter here. 
zero as the x coordinate, create those little faces, and we can just mirror this. So now we have a nice little ring or a circle. Now we can add a new plane. Let's apply a mirror as well for the plane. Or we can just copy the modifiers off of the circle. Oops, not the material, the modifiers. Now it's somewhere inside the circle. Let's just hide it. Let's actually show the curve in real time. And use the mirror modifier for the x-axis. By pressing Alt and H we can unhide the circle. So yeah, now you can just create some sort of mesh to make it meet in the middle. Let's add some more loops and let's add another subdivision surface modifier to make it smooth. And now we can use the, again, the falloff that we still have enabled, proportional editing and scale it. And let's just restrict it to the z-axis and use a different method than root. Let's take smooth for example. Uh, not very nice. I think sharp would work better. All right. So for example something like this. Then we can add some more loops extrude it like this and have some different kind of ring for example. Then of course you can touch it up, make it nicer with all the other methods. And we of course not restricted to just working basically with the almost two-dimensional plane wrapped around a ring. We can also use this curve. Let's copy it one more time. And let's also create another empty just to have uh, some sort of guideline for the length. Let's make a cube this time. Now scaling is actually uh, half as much as the dimension, so we want the ring length. It's again a perimeter, but let's divide it by half and move it by one in the y direction. So now let's create, for example, a cube. Move it by one. And let's disable this one. Let's stretch it something like this. Oh, let's just make the cube a bit wider in the y direction. Let's apply or add a subdivision surface and then let's make it some sort of shape like I'm just improvising at this point so I don't know let's make some sort of simple dolphin or fish Looks more like a fish rather than a dolphin, but yeah. Something very, very simple, so it doesn't take too much time just watching me do stuff. So now we can wrap it around the curve. 
And there we go. Can of course make it smaller. So let's and use an array to make several of those. And let's make it a bit smaller in the z axis. And it can, of course, as I said, not be limited to one dimension. So it can actually yeah, use the three dimension that we have here. We have something like this. Or we can use some sort of other animal. So let's delete this one. Let's add another cube. So again, something very simple and plain. Make some pause here. Sorry if I'm quiet in this section, but yeah, there isn't really much to tell at this point, so just go crazy with whatever you want to make. something like this for example, you can use the tails to combine them for example and instead of relative you can use the constant offset kind of like this or something and then let's move the tail a little something like this for example and then probably just something I thought up just as I went along. So another useful thing is if you actually want to make a different kind of shape but you still want the nice round circle in the middle. So one way to do this is by, for example, using what we learned with the screw modifier. So let's just merge it into one point, move it along to 17.7 divided by 2, take in the screw modifier, Let's make it 200 and let's extrude it. Let's name it shape and move it to another layer. After we flip or use the calculate order checkbox. Let's move it into another full uh, layer by pressing M. And now let's create a new object. Let's just make a cylinder. And let us delete this face. Actually, let's delete it completely, create a new one and make it rather low resolution because that way it's going to be easier to edit. So basically the geometry is going to be made with the modifiers. So let's scale it up. Let's scale it down on the z-axis. Let's activate the other layer and move it a bit lower. So, here we go. Let's make it something like this. And 
Now what we want to do is actually change the shape while still maintaining the nice circle in the middle. So one way to do that is to create a new vertex group. Inner and apply and then we can use uh, first of all let's add a subdivision modifier and then let's add a shrink wrap modifier and let's select this shape and it's going to shrink wrap the whole object but we want to use just the vertex group that we just created so here we go you can use the bevel, for example, to still have a nicer shape. And let's flip the normals. All right. So no matter what I do now, we're going to have this nice circle in the middle, as long as it, of course, doesn't overlap. So now we can create all sorts of shapes, like the usual sigil rings. For example, just move this and scale it. And of course, since it's going to be symmetrical, we can delete one half, create another mirror modifier, and smooth it to the top. So now, yeah, I'm going to just change one part, something like this. And let's see it from another side. We can, of course, make it wider here, using the z-axis. And yeah. Modify it any way we want. And of course, we can add new objects, for example, by selecting this two and snapping the 3D cursor adding a new object, like, I don't know, let's take a torus, rotate it, oops, something like this, or any sort of decoration that you want. Of course, creating a hole, the obvious solution could also be to just subtract it from another mesh, so, for example, you can use this, use a boolean modifier, different, select it, hide it, and we're going to have this as a whole. But it's not going to behave very nicely, for example, if we add a subsurface my subdivision modifier on top of it, it's going to create some very ugly geometry. So having it shrink wrapped actually allows to still use it for smoothing, for example. If we put a bevel on top of it, we can still use the bevel even though there is the hole that's going to remain the same. So, removing the clamping. If we move it around, it's still somewhat acceptable. Of course, there are now some issues because the bevel is bigger than the faces. So if we remain with the clamp, then it still works. Or if we use the bevel at a subdivision instead and increase the amount. You can, of course, just create more loop cuts and exclude those two lines from this vertex group by clicking Remove and then they're not going to be affected anymore. Or we can just affect them to a lesser degree. You can actually check it or visualize it by going to the weight paint menu. The red is going to be at 100% and the blue one is at 0%. So the last part is going to be adding some text since, yeah, adding individual text is a basis for an individual mm. ring. Oh, come on. So, yeah. To add some text, let's just press Alt and Shift and select text. So, that was easy. 
to change the font you need to go to the font panel and click on browse and if you are on a windows machine then we can just go to windows font and select any or you can just download your own font font or create your own and at this point let's go and take a look again at the material page and we can see that the detail needs to be at least 0.4 for example for embossed detail for silver in this case but yeah for text in general a 0.5 millimeter should be the minimum yes, in order to be legible so let's create a little sphere and make it 0.5 millimeters and scale the text so it's at least this big oh yeah that should do now if you want to put the text around the curve we're going to have some issues because yeah the faces of this is basically a vector and the faces aren't going to be look very good so let's transform it into a mesh of course you can press tab to change the text something like this so pressing alt and, and c will let you turn it into a mesh and now if we take a look you can see changing the o or wrapping the o is going to look awful because of this very long faces so let's just move it a little bit and as you can see it stretches the face and looks horrible so one way around this is to add the subsurface modifier but of course that looks horrible as well but that's one of the applications for using simple because we just want to create some more geometry without actually altering the way it appears but that's not actually enough so we can also use the knife tool by pressing k at the bottom you can see the different definitions or different function it has so we want to cut through everything by pressing z and also some straight lines by pressing c so then just let's make some cuts and yeah what this does is it creates some more geometry along the lines where we just want to wrap it around the curve so yeah the most important part is basically breaking down the very long faces Alright, then press enter to confirm. So let's take one part, let's make it again proportionate, let's move it to test it out. And yeah, it's transforming a lot nicer now. So yeah, at this point we can wrap it around the curve. So yeah, let's select it. And it looks weird because the origin is not in the same spot as the curve. So yeah, it was at, of course, 17.7 divided by 2. And now let's rotate it along the x-axis. And here we go. What we need is some more solidify modifiers. Ooh. And there are still some issues with the O's. So let's go into edit mode and see what happens. Oh, and in case your object is selected but out of view, you can just press the period on the numpad to center it. So yeah, what's actually happening is that, the first of all, the mesh is subdivided, of course, and the vertices are so close that the curve, when it wraps them around, like this, it moves them in a way that the solidifier actually overlaps at the other end. So, one way to solve it is basically just put the solidify modify in front. And there we have it. All we need is just to make it the right way up by rotating it by 180 degrees. And all that remains is to put it on the ring.
So let's take this one. And there we have some text. We can of course also use the boolean modifier to uh, yeah, sub the distracted, subtract it from the mesh. And when using the boolean though, please take into account that it needs to still have enough material to comply with the minimal wall thickness. This means it needs, needs to be thick enough as well as wide enough, so basically you also need enough space at the bottom. So it would have to look something like this. Does of course look ugly, but this won't show like this when it's printed. So you can use the uh, edge split modifier to have a better understanding of how it actually is going to look. Of course, you should also make sure that it's at least 0 0.5 millimeters deep. Let's tweak the split angle a little bit. As you're noticing, it's getting a little slow. That's because there is, by now, some more, some more, more geometry, and it takes some time processing it. So one way to go around it is to go to this panel, the scene panel, and select, for example, one subdivision, and activate simplify. That way, it's gonna disregard more the subdivisions, and it's going to be a lot faster. And if the shape is not round, so let's go a few steps back. Some more steps back. Yeah, let's take this text and move it this layer with this ring. And let's just create a copy and hide this one. And now let's delete our curve modifier. Let's turn it around. Oh, that was right. Let's move this one away. And now we can also use the shrink wrap for the text. So let's use the shrink wrap, move it in front of the uh, solidify modifier, and use the ring. And keep above surface. Now it's creating some issue because it's a bit too far away, so let's move it closer. And there are still a few issues, so first of all, let's make it overlap completely and increase. And then let's increase the subdivisions of the ring a bit more so it's a smoother surface. Because there are still some hard edges here. Something like this. Let's increase the size a little bit. And let's tweak the mesh a little bit more. So let's cut it here a bit. And here. As you well, by adding more cuts there are still some issues, so at this point we can take a little easier route, or a lazier route, and let's just select this one. And by holding control, we can go around the circle, 
still holding control. Let's hide it. Now let's do the same for the outer circle. Oops. Um, by holding control it's going to take the shortest part of the new vertex you click, so we need to make sure that it's actually clicking around so it's the still the shortest part. So it doesn't take any shortcuts along the mesh. Something oh come on. something like this. Let's delete everything else. Oop. Except, of course, let's also basically hovering over vertex and pressing L will select the whole object, everything that's connected. Now I can do the same with this one and delete it. And this one as well. And then let's repeat it for the other letter. Let's delete it. Oh, it seems there is still one face. Oh yeah, let's delete this edge. And disable proportional editing. And let's just bridge those. And these as well. And yeah. Looks good enough. I'd say. If it doesn't, we can still add some more loop cuts. Uh, or using the knife, depending on the geometry. So yeah, moving the object around won't actually move it, because it's still projected on top of the ring, but we can tweak it with the offset, so move it sort of like this, for example. Oh yeah, there we go. Well, to sum up, we can use various methods to create simple bent rings, either just by shape, or using the screw modifier, or the array modifier, also using a mesh, or just the solidify modifier, and so on. We can use additional objects that we can superimpose over it, this for example, or we can create little arrays, or we use a curve. We can create wireframe by either mesh or with the skin modifier. We can just use a band that we wrap around the curve. We can use two curves to also tilt the object along the curve. We can create simple meshes combinations to create different shapes. We can of course also add some more, for example, sphere even on top of that. There is no limit to it. We can create some simple shapes around along the curve or even more complex ones. We can make a shrink wrap around a round object, and we can add some text. So let me show you a few simple examples that I made with this method. This one is a very simple one, basically just a little mesh with a ray modifier along a curve. This one is a little hedgehog basically a wire mesh hedgehog created with the skin modifier. So if I just enable the curve, yeah, this is what the mesh looks like without the skin modifier. So yeah, basically a little skin modifier wrapped around the curve. 
and also a little braid. As you can see, it's just a few lines of vertices that are wrapped like a bird, repeated with a array modifier, and also wrapped around the curve. Of course, here's a little issue because that's at the end. So this is the final example where the ends are just merged together. And yeah, this one is basically the same principle, except that it's just a mesh that's sculpted on top of it. So yeah, if I disable the curve, it's just a very flat cat that has some sculpt on top of it. Yeah, the mesh looks like this, with several layers of sculpting and also a different curve for the tail, so if I disable it's gonna be flat. Also use a little bit of an armature to move the legs a bit a little bit around. So I could tweak the legs a little bit. And yeah. Then it's just wrapped around the curve. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. And if you have any suggestions you want me to cover, then yeah, feel free to add them in the comments.